that is that is a little bit annoying. I'm missing something there in my in my knowledge of the texture slots. So I want to be able to paint on top of this, and I can't see it. That is going to cause me an issue. Um, it's not even alphabetical, is it? And it's grayed out, so you can't move them. <laughs> well, it's showing one and not the other, which is absolutely fine. Can I just change my material? Can you have? It? Yes, ignore me. It was just it, it was in the wrong shading mode. Because I've been working okay. between different viewports. Okay, so if I if we make sure it's on material preview, it's showing the whole material that preview. That makes sense. And so then we can switch between these texture slots here, which is very useful. So now we can have a slightly uh, darker color. So if we go, uh, where shall I paint? I'll paint on the model itself again. So I'll have a look at this from the side. Uh, so what we can do here is paint grooves in here. And I will want a slightly different color. So let's scroll down. We had mid gray before, and let's let's plop it in the middle. Now let's make it slightly darker. Now you don't want huge variations. We don't want black and white, uh, so we want to paint that on. And if we go through and just add these on, we're basically drawing over the top, and I can already see that it's coming through. Painting with normals is pretty awesome. I'm going to draw a box around the outside. I don't know if it's going to look look any good, uh, but now we've got. Okay, it looks a bit. It, it definitely needs uh, height at this point, as in real height. But you can see there that drawing with it is really useful. And with this, you, you may recall earlier, I changed the fall off of the brush. Mm -hmm. So we've got this really sharp and jagged change now. Whereas perhaps what would be better, and because I was viewing it straight on, I wasn't seeing this happen. But under the fall off, I could change this to one of these other ones. Well, this looks kind of planky to me, but... Yes, Exactly. Now it's a uh, now it's got a different fall off to it. We're going to get a completely different effect. And again, apologies for the rushness here. But let's just draw around this real quick, like so. That seems smoother, and it looks better as well. It's very it's a very subtle difference. Um, and we can see that I've missed an area just there. But being able to paint these type of details on is really really useful. And zoom level matters, by the way, with your with your brushes. Yeah. This is something that can... I mean, I would also paint a lighter height on the lighter wood on the outside so the frame comes out and give yourself a, a real sense of depth. Uh, it won't add depth. Well, no, the illusion of, I mean. Yeah, the illusion of depth it can do. And that's one of the things you have to watch out for with uh, such simple objects like this. If you, if you make this a lighter color around the edge... Uh, then you and then use this as a displacement map. You can end up really screwing up around where it meets on the edges because it really doesn't know what to do, and it can end up separating your geometry a little oh. bit as well. Right, I want to move on from uh, this extra thing here to different layers because one of the one of the things that I think is really useful to know is how to manage different layers in Blender. So we're on our shading workspace, and what we need to do if we want a different layer when it comes to our our base color, and it's often the one that you want a different layer with. You don't necessarily uh, mind adding in extra dots on the bump here where we might have rivets. So let, let's do something like rivets around our, around our model itself. So we want another base layer, and we want to mix them together. But how do we want to mix them? Well, that will depend on what you want to do. So I'm going to do a mix RGB. And then I'm going to plug these two in. So these are coming down. And what you'll end up with, if if you're not careful, is diluting the image. So there are a couple of different mix modes that you can play with. All, the, all of these different mix modes here. I'm going to leave it as mix to begin with and then take it from there. So if you were doing... If you are faking some ambient occlusion or, or edge wear and things like that, you might not want to use a mix. Um, for some ambient occlusion, you might want to use multiply so you can, any areas that are slightly darker than white end up more shaded quite naturally. So I could have done these lines here that we were playing with using um, using that technique instead. Not going to. I'm going to leave this as mixed for the moment. And then over here, we're, we're not going to use the cube base. We're going to use a new image. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a new image. Same size as before. 
I'm going to use it. I'm going to call it, sorry, cold two to begin with. I'm just going to leave it um, transparent as well. So under the color, change the alpha down to zero and make sure the alpha is checked and click OK. Then in our shading workspace, we can change this to cold two. And then before we do anything else, I'm also going to save that. So Alt and S, you can save it to the disk. Here as well, save, save it to the disk. Now this is obviously different from what we were doing before. It's all just in Blender, but I can just, uh, let's create a path here and call it live stream. There we go. I'm going to save that in. And I'm going to do the same for the other images as well, because this is how you would take them out of Blender and work on them externally if you wanted to. Uh, so let's save that as well. And if we save as, interesting, because it was already saved within Blender, I could not save it outside of Blender. Have we got another one? Uh, bump. Okay, let's just save that as well. File, save as. Oh, it's called it a UDIM. Nice. Save. Okay, it wanted the thing that I deleted in it. This is something I've not played with in Blender yet. The, um, the UDIM stuff. It's a, it's a way of having multiple textures uh, on, on, one, with on one on one um, UV map. Yeah, very, very useful. Not a general workflow that... Uh, it's very new as workflows go, from what I understand. Uh, not new as such. It's it's more high-end. It, you would use it a lot in uh, definitely AAA stuff. But for low-poly stuff, I don't think you'd ever use a UDIM. I, 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 I might be wrong, I, but I can't see a work... A uh, use case for it. But anyway, uh, shading, we've got our cold two coming in. So under cold two, we can start doing some stuff. And when we're on. For those of you who don't know, UDIM stands for You Don't Imagine Monkeys. Helpful. Thank you. Um, I can't. Uh, you, uh, no. Universal Scene Descriptors, USD. Th those will be coming in uh, heavy and fast. Though. Universal Scene Descriptor is is something that is very, very efficient, and Blender does support it. And again, it's a high-end workflow, uh, but it's a great way of... Um, you know, at the moment, we've got all of these different issues where you've got an FBX or an OBJ or a GLTF um, and all the things associated with that, like things like textures and uh, what else would you bake in? Bones and animation data and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Universal Scene Descriptor actually does all of that for us and as the name suggests is universal um which is pretty useful 